wanted to talk a little bit about laws of exponents. And the book does a okay job of doing a kind of quick treatment of this, but I wanted to emphasize how algebraic rules really just encode facts about arithmetic. And if you're confused about an algebra rule, you can really plug in numbers and get a sense of whether you've got the right rule or not just with numbers. Because that's what algebra really is. It's just generalizing the rules of arithmetic. So what does it mean to take like 2 to the third power? It's just an abbreviation. It's just a convenient abbreviation for multiplying 2 by itself three times. And so that 3 is about counting how many 2's there are. And the rules of exponents are really all about two, two ideas, counting and grouping. And that's really all that there is to these rules of exponents that we're going to talk about. So let's look at like 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 4. That's 3 2's times 4 2's. And if we wanted to simplify that, we could just recognize the parentheses aren't doing much for us. That's just seven twos put together. And why is it seven? What's the special about the number seven? It's three plus four. It's however many are in this group, plus however many in this group. So we're counting. We, they came to us grouped, and then we're just counting them. We're sort of just ignoring the grouping. And that's two to the three plus four. In general, two to any number, and another number, k and l, that's going to be 2 to the k plus l. Just because there's going to be k2s, there's going to be l2s, how many 2s together, if you count them all together, there's going to be k plus l2s. And in general, of course, I'm using 2 as a base here, but there's nothing special about that. I'm just trying to make it a little bit more low-tech and explicit. The general rule is going to be that a to the k times a to the l equals a to the k plus l. And that's one of the most basic, that's probably the most basic rule of exponents. That if you put multiply KA's together and LA's together, then that's going to be K plus LA's all together. And um, the book has a treatment of this with very similar, but just a little different. Okay, now, what's the next rule? Um, oh, actually, let me use, sorry, I was just, if we use their letters, it really doesn't matter what the letters are, and that's pretty important. But let me go ahead and use their letters. A to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. Okay, I was just forgetting which letters they were using. Here, um, it is actually a little bit important. For us, it's important that k and l are, are whole numbers. Um, and w a beautiful and amazing thing is we can actually later make sense of this, where k and l are any numbers. Uh, or almost, we could, we could do almost anything with this. And even like pi or one half or root two or something, and this this rule will still continue to be true, and that's pretty amazing. But its be, its heart is at this case where k and l are just whole numbers, like three, four, five, six. Um, what we do need to know is something that the book has already mentioned, which is this weird kind of weird fact, something that. So here's a claim a to the 0 equals 1. And that's no matter what a is. Although some people, there's an issue about 0 to the 0, but we'll, we'll pretty much be able to avoid that. Why is this true? And it's important to note what, what this means. Well, 2 to the 3 was a notation. This was a definition. 2 to 3 equals 2 times 2 times 2. That's not like a theorem that you prove. It's a definition. It's just a notation that says, OK, we're going to find a new notation that, that packages this up in an efficient way. So a to the 0 is, again, just a notation. And we can actually decide what we think it should mean. But we should probably use some, a, a definition that's actually a smart definition. Here's why. This is a good definition. What we do, what we do, what happens is that this rule is so nice, and it turns out to be so useful, so many places that we would like it to be true as generally as possible. And so, if we come up with a definition for a to the zero, then that it, we'd like it to not violate this rule. That would really be unfortunate. And it, so, the question is, can we do that? Okay. Well, let's see. A to the zero 
times a to the k should be, can we make that equal to a to the 0 plus k? Well, that's just a to the k again. Let me just make it a little friendlier again, like 2 to the 0 times 2 to the 3. Here's an example, e.g. That means that this number, 2 to the 0, or in general, a to the 0, has got to be something pretty special. It's got to be some magic number that when I multiply it by something, it doesn't do anything. Like this times 2 to the 3, or 8 in disguise, is supposed to, it's supposed to be 8 still. Am I going to be able to do that? Yes, if I insist that 2 to the 0 equals 1. And here I'm going to insist that a to the 0 equals 1. And what's going on here is that I'm not really proving a theorem. I'm saying this is a really, really good reason to d define a to the 0 in a certain way. We better define it to be 1. OK, so that's going to be a very useful thing. Um, now, let's see. What about a, well, let's see. Let's, let's go back to 2's. Let's suppose I had 2 times 2 times 2. And instead of just multiplying that by some other random unrelated bunch of 2's, I'm going to repeat that group. And let's say I'm going to repeat it four times. So there's four groups of three twos. How many twos total? Twelve twos total. So this is going to end up being two to the twelfth. But what was it? This was 2 cubed, this is 2 cubed, this is 2 cubed, this is 2 cubed. And when I r take that number, that group of three twos, and I r multiply that by itself four times, what I'm doing is I'm taking 2 to the 3, putting in parentheses, making it a group, a unit, and then multiplying that, that by itself four times. And so what I'm seeing is that that's the same thing as just 12 twos multiplied together, 2 to the 12th. So let's see why that 12 came in. The 12 came in because anytime you have four groups of three things, you're going to get 4 times 3 equals 12, 12 things. So again, it's about grouping and counting. The general rule would be 2 to the m, yep, and then to the n is 2 to the m times n, or even more generally, it doesn't matter what the base is. I just pick 2 to be simple. And that's another rule of exponents. It's not something you have to just memorize and say, the teacher told me this. It's really about grouping and counting. And you can always remember it by just writing down an example like this. And the notice the, the, the biggest number I wrote on here was a 4, 2, 3, and 4. It's all, it's all accessible if you just look at simple numbers like 2, 3, and 4. One more rule. Let's see if we can do that in under two minutes. Let's say if I have, now let's look at two, two different bases. Let's say I take 2 times 3, and that, that can be a group. I can multiply that together by itself, 2 times 3. Let's say multiply that by itself 4 times. So that's 2 times 3 to the 4th power. And now it's about rearranging. It's just still about counting and grouping, but it's, we can regroup that. It's really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, that's equal to 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th. doesn't matter what order I multiply things in or how I group them. That's called this the commutative and associative laws, to be really technical about it. But that's something we know about multiplication. And so in general, we're going to get that if I take a product and I take that to a power, pretty sure this is how they write it. Oh, they use an m. OK, I'll use an m. You just take that same power of each of the factors. Again, if you get confused about it, I highly recommend just putting in some numbers. Twos, threes, fours, really simple numbers to verify what the rule is. Now, what does get complicated is what if I do like a plus b to the fourth? Is that the same as a to the fourth plus b to the fourth? And I'll advertise the answer. Not so simple. We'll definitely want to be able to understand that at some point. But it's not so simple. Because this is about repeated multiplication. This is about addition. I'm not just doing the same operation and regrouping and recounting. I, that would be about how, uh, how multiplication and addition interact. That's a little more complicated.